This conference will now be recorded. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to another one of our Monday videos here at Intern Bridge. I am really excited today. We are visiting with the Center for Life's Work at Nazareth College up in New York. And uh, with me, I have Emily Carpenter, who is the Executive Director, and Dale Laburn, who is the Assistant Director for Internships. How are you guys doing today? Great. Thank you for having us. Fantastic. Hey, and thanks for joining us. Uh, we wanted to visit with you guys a little bit about some of the internship initiatives that you have going at Nazareth. So tell me about what's going on up there. Yeah, I think there are two things that we'd like to, to highlight. Um, and what we're really trying to do is increase the number of students who are participating in internships, um, but then also deepen their engagement within the experience. Uh, so one of the things that we're doing is we have this thing called Spark Grant. Um, where we provide a $1,500 uh, stipend to students who are completing unpaid internships uh, during the summer, and we provide them with a scholarship to be able to enroll in an internship course. And there are other pathways a student can take with Spark, um, but internships is, is one of them. And we've seen that we have basically doubled uh, the number of students completing internships as a result of implementing the Spark grant. Um, so it's doubled. It's doubled. Yeah. Oh. You've doubled the number of students engaged in internships. Yeah. Wow. I hope that you took some time to pat yourself on the back for that, because that, <laughs> that's pretty amazing. There hasn't been time. <laughs> There's never enough time. Yeah. But no, it's, it's been exciting. And, and I think one of the great things is, is we're targeting first year, second year students, um, or students who just transferred and are in their first year at Nazareth. Um, so we've been able to engage them early, mm -hmm. uh, which, is, which is really exciting. And I think one of the other benefits is that we're engaging students who might not typically do an internship as a part of their program. Um, okay. so connecting with, with students in new and different ways as well. Okay, well, so you, you're talking about how you engage the students, but how does that, uh, how does that internship or the uh, experiential education, how is it integrated into the academic curriculum? Okay. Good question. Um, so we have an experiential learning requirement here at, at Nazareth. Um, so every student has to do something like an internship or a student teaching experience, or um, there's a variety of, of different different yeah. pathways, um, but it's something that each and every student has to do. And there are also majors that have an internship requirement built into their program, or it can be an elective option for, for their program as well. Internships have historically been a credit bearing thing at Nazareth. Mm -hmm. So um, mm -hmm. I think it's one of the reasons that Dale and I both came to Nazareth because we saw, oh, they're doing this in a really, um, unique way that yeah. really engages students. Um, so we, we haven't had to fight that battle about whether or not internships should be for credit. Um, it's just something that's always been um, yeah. here. So um, that makes it a little easier for us, but you know, our yeah. goal was really to um, engage more students with the, with the program. And, and we know from, from the research that internships that are credit bearing are significantly uh, rated higher by, intern by students in their level of satisfaction, and when you when you add on that layer of uh, either a paid internship or what what you're talking about that scholarship, that segment of the population that we've looked at over time, those that are uh, earning academic credit and also earning a salary, have the highest level of satisfaction of all of the other subgroups that we looked at. So we know, and again. I think to, to many of us here, it's kind of a, uh, it's almost a no brainer, but it's still something that we consistently and constantly have to kind of prove. Um, and I know many schools out there are, are looking at, okay, how do we integrate this? You know, how do we make these things credit bearing? And it's nice to see um, an example of it working really, really well. Yeah, and, and it's exciting because we're able to use the, the, the course and the academic experience to deepen our students' engagements within their internship. Um, so as they're earning credit, they are doing purposeful things like building a relationship with their supervisor. They are job crafting. They are learning how to take initiative at their internship. Um, so they're doing a lot of things that get them active in the internship. And I think that probably speaks to the satisfaction part as well, because they're not just sort of going through the experience. They're, they're taking meaningful and indirect action to, to make a, a contribution, to make an impact, and then also to learn from the experience. Right. So what kind of interaction outreach are you engaged in with, with employers or community partners that are hosting your interns uh, for these experiences? Yeah, so 
there are a couple of ways that we try to interact and engage with our, our employers um, while the students are engaged in internship experiences. And, and one is through a site visit. Um, we make sure that about the midway point of the internship experience, we are going out to the site and having a conversation with both the intern and the internship supervisor. And what I found anyway, and as I've been doing this, is they tell us like, you're the only school that seems to be doing this, um, which, is, which is great and wonderful for us, but it allows us to come together around that sort of common goal of this being a learning experience for our students and we get to talk about the things that are going well, how the intern is doing, um, but then we're able to maybe course correct a little bit and, and make sure that you know both parties are getting as much out of the experience as they can and that it's meeting their expectations. Um, and by doing this, I, I think it's helped us create a, a deeper connection and relationship with, with these sites because it's at these visits, they say, okay, we're thinking about our next intern, you know, who are you gonna send us next? Um, which, is, which is great, great to hear. Um, but we also try to involve our partners as we shape our internship program. And we're using the feedback that they're giving us on their particular interns and kind of what they're seeing in the field uh, to help us as we're thinking about, you know, different skill building opportunities that we might, might offer to our interns. And in many cases, we are involving them in the delivery of, of some of these sessions. And we'll have alums, for example, come back and do sessions on professional communication or public speaking or leadership as a way to sort of, you know, to give back, but, but ultimately to, to also make sure that these interns have the right skill sets to be successful um, in the field. You know, I think it's amazing that, you know, back in 1903, when John Dewey stated, that when the barriers between life in school and out are reduced, real learning happens. And how complicated that very simple concept is. But when we engage employers as partners okay. in this process, um, you know, I, I say it at, at the workshops that we do, you know, we're all in the same boat. Employers, higher ed, we all want the same thing. Um, okay. But yet, even if we are in the same boat, we tend to be paddling in different directions. And mm -hmm. it, you know, when we engage them in meeting their own outcomes and, how, and showing how we can bring value to them in their long-term, for example, talent acquisition strategies mm -hmm. uh, and helping them to design the experience that benefits them, it ultimately benefits our students and it benefits us. And it's, it's just awesome to hear that you are doing that in a, in a really meaningful way. So, uh, you know, gosh, thanks for kind of you know, <laughs> leading the way on that. Um, I know that so many folks are probably, you're probably gonna have your email uh, email blowing up when, uh, when folks watch this because they're, you know, everybody wants to know, okay, how are you doing that? So, uh, you know, thank you for, for sharing all of that. So, you know, as we look at, and as you guys have been doing this for a while, what are some trends that you're starting to see out there? You know, positive trends, really things that are really positive that are happening uh, out there in the internships world. Yeah, tell them about the course. <laughs> okay, yeah, so um, as I started to say before, um, when students are doing their internship work out there in this course and we are trying to help students be purposeful and help them direct their, their experience. Um, and one of the things that we're trying to have our students do um, is to really sit down with their supervisors and better understand their expectations and how they're defining particular skill sets yeah. that they're looking for. Because we've been thinking about that skills gap thing, um, and obviously right. internships are a great way to sort of bridge that gap or build skills, right? Um, but what we're starting to see is if our interns are having kind of direct conversations with our employers about their responsibilities as an intern, the skills that they need to demonstrate um, to be a successful intern right from the beginning and in combining that with sort of this this course that we're putting students through at we've seen um, employer and supervisor evaluation scores of skill sets start to rise a little bit okay. um, now certainly there are probably many reasons for this and i'm not saying it's you know our, our course necessarily um, but i think when an intern and a supervisor are able to sit down and have a better understanding of what those expectations are. Maybe we're starting to talk about things in the same way and have a common understanding. So it gets to maybe rating those skill sets a, a little bit, a little bit better. So that's one of the interesting things that, that 
I've seen over the past year since we've been having our students do that, you know, those evaluation scores and how our supervisors are perceiving skills might be might be changing a little bit. Yeah, I think it's exciting because you know you hear about the skills gap and I and I it, it seems like a big deal. Like students say they're here and supervisors say they're here. And mm -hmm. um, actually if you get two people together and talk about what do you mean by communication skills, exactly. then all of a sudden they're they're here, you know? And mm -hmm. so then um, the students having a better experience, the supervisors more satisfied yeah. with, with what the students doing. Um, it's it's better for everybody. And one of the things, one of the, the long-term outcomes, uh, more of a, that, that uh, um, uh, distal uh, focus that, that that develops is the ability for that student. I mean, when that student is doing those things in the internship, they are learning that this is how you communicate with a supervisor. Yeah. Where, is that, where is that individual going to be 10, 15 years from now? So right. by instilling these types of uh, competencies early, we're really changing the way work gets done, the way employees interact with their supervisors, and, and really impacting the culture of work and sure. what that means for generations to come. I mean, it's, it's not because that, that student and that, that employer, yes, it may be the first time that they're doing it, but when that student becomes a full-time employee, becomes a supervisor, they're not going to know another way to do it. And no, they're going to be communicating with their interns and their full-time employees in that same way. And I can't help but think that that's just going to make our workplaces such a much more, can I use the word enjoyable? Um, uh, less truthful, frustrating, yeah, yeah. Less <laughs> frustrating because those skills are being developed so early in the process. Yeah, and to piggyback off that, one of the things that I'm hearing our interns talk a lot about is the sense of belonging at work. And I think right. when you are also building a relationship, um, I think it increases that. That's that's what we're seeing anyway, um, and it exposes the intern to the culture of the organization and in we're seeing that they, by doing some of these activities, they're feeling like they that that's a place where they belong, and ultimately, that's I think a lot of what our students are looking for when they think about whatever is going to come next. They want to be at a place where they can be their best, most authentic self, and if they're going through some steps that help them achieve that as an intern, you're you're absolutely right. They're going to start to do those things, you know, in future experience as well as well, which is outstanding. And you know the 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 focus of students today making the transition from college to the world of work, either through an internship or at, at, at the point of graduation, are looking for meaning and they're looking for purpose. Yep. And uh, I, I don't know whether um, you have read anything by Zach Mercurio. I, I know we've had him on here uh, on Intern Bridge in, in some of our, uh, I think he was in our last Thought Leader Symposium. But the work that he is doing around helping individuals find that meaning and find that purpose and to helping organizations design an environment that can help that to happen wow. uh, more effectively. It, I think that that's a real game changer for whatever industry or whatever employer chooses to do so, to engage with this next generation of leaders that's coming out of our schools. Mm -hmm. Right, right. I mean, I think it's it's a, a bottom line business decision for companies around retention, but it, it, like you said, it makes things enjoyable, more enjoyable for everybody. Absolutely. Well, you know what? I'm so happy that you guys were able to join us here uh, for this and sharing what's going on up at Nazareth. Um, any final thoughts you'd like to share? Thanks so much for having us. Yeah, this is great. Yeah. Oh, our pleasure, our pleasure. And we look forward to uh, a lots, lots more questions. I'm sure that, as I mentioned earlier, you guys are going to get inundated with, uh, with emails and calls uh, with questions about how you're making this thing work because so many of us out there, and as I travel the country, I, everybody's seeking to find that integration point that makes sense for everybody involved. And it's so nice to see a great example out there that we can all look, to, look toward. Thank you. Right. Thank Happy you to much. share, for sure. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us for another video here at uh, Intern Bridge, and we'll see you again next time. Take care, everybody. Bye.